Hello Rockers! Did you know that the reason Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen were such awesome rockers was because of the way they made their guitar strings move? That's right, they have exceptionally advanced knowledge about how guitar strings move and clearly they must have had a deep grasp of the differential equations governing the vibrations of guitar strings. In fact, according to my analysis of the Jimi Hendrix and Van Halen musical canon, there is strong evidence that these two legendary rockers not only understood the ideal guitar string and the damp guitar string, they took their analysis to a new level and incorporated the fact that guitar strings have an inherent stiffness. They knew that this stiffness created an harmonicity and this knowledge made them rock in ways that no one had ever rocked before. If you would like to understand how they did this, keep watching this video. The notion of guitar string stiffness can be understood as a string's resistance to bending. Unlike real strings, guitar strings will naturally straighten out as long as the bending is not too severe. As you can see from this demonstration, a guitar string wants to be straight. The forces that unbend the guitar string have their origin within the steel material. An ideal string has no such internal forces and will just retain any shape no matter how twisted. A guitar string under tension will behave like a stiff spring. The guitar string will stretch and this stretching will be countered by elastic forces internal to the string. Our previous analysis ignored this fact. The tension applied to the string by the tuning machines is actually distributed over the cross-section of the string. This distributed force of tension is called axial stress. The string's response to axial stress is to become longer until the internal forces balance the stress of tension. This lengthening is called strain when a guitar string is bent. However, the picture is more complex. The convex side of the string experiences compression. This compression is shown in blue in this diagram. The concave side of the guitar string experiences tension, which is shown in red in this diagram. The compressed side generates internal forces that opposes the compression. The stretched side of the guitar string generates internal forces that opposes the extension. All of these forces tend to eliminate the bending. This is the origin of guitar string stiffness and the reason guitar strings naturally tend to straighten. Let's review what we have done in the previous two videos. When we studied the wave equation of the ideal guitar string, we intentionally ignored stiffness and damping. This ideal model only considered the force of tension. The first term of the wave equation is related to the acceleration of a point on the string and second term is related to the bending of the string. Then we added a term that modeled the dissipation of string energy as a force opposing the velocity of the string. This force was related to the constant k. For longer damping times, k is smaller, for shorter damping times k is larger. The bigger the value of k, the stronger the damping. Now we add a new term to the wave equation. This is a term that captures the fact that forces internal to the guitar string will tend to make the guitar string straighten out. This is the form of the wave equation that Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen probably used to create all of their hip riffs and smoking solos. This equation is not typically addressed in the literature of mathematical physics and therefore we will give it a name. We will call it the Eddie Hendrix equation in honor of the two artists who were, probably, the first to use it in a meaningful way. Now you are watching a human explain why this new term effectively models the internal forces of a guitar string. To see the explanation at normal speed, follow the link in the description section below this video. What this human is demonstrating is that the fact the guitar string is curved generates internal forces that are perpendicular to the tension of the guitar string. These forces are called shear forces and they create torque at every point along the guitar string. This torque is always acting to eliminate any bending in the string. The human's analysis shows that this resistance to bending is related to the rate of change of the rate of change of the rate of change of the bending. That is a long way of saying that the acceleration of the guitar string is adjusted by a term proportional to the fourth partial derivative with respect to position. 
the Eddy Hendricks equation is, surprisingly, not much harder to solve than the damped equation that all of the lesser rock stars use. This human is still able to use the same technique as he or she used to solve the ideal wave equation and the damped wave equation. The solution depends on the fact that the guitar string is fixed in place at the nut and at the bridge of the guitar. The solution also depends on the fact that the bending torque on the guitar string is zero at the nut and bridge. The solution also depends on the initial shape of the guitar string just before it is released by the pick. Just as with the ideal guitar string model and the damped guitar string model, the solution to the Eddie Hendricks equation is an infinite sum of modes. However, these modes are not harmonic because the guitar string's stiffness introduces inharmonicity. Therefore, the damped and stiff string has two sources of inharmonicity. One source is the damping, as we saw in the previous video, and the other source is the stiffness. We will compare these two forms of inharmonicity later in this video. Recall that the goal of this analysis is a formula that will tell us the precise shape of the guitar string at any time after the pick release. That formula will tell us the displacement from equilibrium of any point on the string at any time after the pick release. This formula will depend on the damping factor K and the stiffness parameter which is called B in the formula. If the damping factor and the stiffness parameter are set to zero, we expect our solution to coincide with the solution to the ideal guitar string equation which we found in the first video. If we set the stiffness parameter to zero but keep a finite damping factor, then we expect our solution to coincide with the damped wave solution. It is hard to believe that intense rockers can keep it together long enough to use the formula to create their epic rock. Given all the distractions of rock stardom, it is unclear how some rock stars find the time to work with even the ideal guitar string equation not to even mention the Eddie Hendricks equation. It should be noted that although Eddie Van Halen certainly used the Eddie Hendricks equation for his music, it is still unclear how he exactly applied it. It is very sad that Eddie Van Halen is no longer able to create music because now we have to learn how to apply the Eddie Hendricks equation ourselves. The equation is not a particularly difficult equation of mathematical physics. In fact, the equation associated with a vibrating drum membrane is much more difficult, but drummers have the advantage of being seated so it is easier for them to think. For many years Eddie Van Halen pretended that his secret to amazing guitar tone was something about his amplifier or effects. The real secret was, without a doubt, his application of the Eddie Hendricks equation to his guitar strings. Although Eddie Van Halen will never write another song for us, now that we know his secret we can all try to work with the Eddie Hendricks equation and become better rockers. This is the solution to the Eddie Hendricks equation. It is the formula for the shape of a guitar string any time after the pick release when the guitar string is subject to damping and stiffness. Despite the fact that stiffness is a quite complicated property to model, this formula is almost the same as the damped formula we studied in the last video. The only difference is the frequency of each mode. The frequency of each mode is given by this expression. The letter B is called the inharmonicity parameter and it is an indication of how stiff the guitar string is. If B was equal to zero then the guitar string would have no stiffness. B gets larger as the internal forces induced by the bending of the string become comparable to the stress on the string due to the tension set by the tuning machines. The stiffness increases the frequency of all the modes. Recall that damping in harmonicity did the opposite. Damping in harmonicity reduced the frequency of all the modes. We will compare these types of in harmonicity later in this video. Now that we have a working formula from the Eddie Hendricks equation, we can calculate the shape of a guitar string. This model is simulating the vibration of the open high E string of the guitar. This simulation introduces an inharmonicity parameter of 0.001, which seems quite small. However, it is easy to see that even such a small parameter has a significant effect on the guitar string shape.
In this simulation the initial shape of the guitar string before the pick release is in red. The ideal guitar string model is in thick green. The blue line is the stiff model without any damping. Now we introduce damping. As you can see from this simulation, the model understands that the overall amplitude of the vibration must decay with time. In order to illustrate this, we have used a short damping time of 100 milliseconds. This is not realistic for a modern electric guitar. Eddie Van Halen told the engineers at Fender that sustain was the most important tone feature. A more realistic damping time is about 6 seconds, or 60 times slower than this simulation. So if 6 seconds is a realistic damping time, what is a realistic inharmonicity parameter for a guitar string? The inharmonicity parameter is a combination of the spring strength of the steel, the shape of the guitar string's cross section, the scale length of the guitar, and the tension set by the tuning machines. Using the numbers for the high E string of an electric guitar string a reasonable number for the inharmonicity parameter is 0 0.00002785. Now we will study the details of the inharmonicity modeled by the Eddie and Rick's equation. In this figure, the blue markers represent the harmonic series for the high E string. The position of the blue markers is established by the tension and mass density of the guitar string only. The blue markers indicate the frequencies for each of the guitar string's harmonics when no damping or stiffness exists. As we expect, the blue markers are evenly separated by the fundamental frequency, which is about 329 Hz in this case. The orange markers show the frequency shift induced by damping only. For this example we have set the damping time to about 1 millisecond, which is unrealistically short. However, despite this extreme level of damping we can see that the frequency shift is only about one-tenth of the frequency of the fundamental. The shift due to damping gets less and less for the higher harmonics. We discovered this in our previous analysis of the damped wave equation, and we see that our analysis of the Eddie Hendricks equation duplicates that result. Now we consider the inharmonicity due to the string stiffness. That is, we set the damping constant to zero and set the inharmonicity parameter to 0 0.001. Despite the small number we note that it is about 100 times more than our estimated inharmonicity for a real guitar string. In this circumstance we can see that the guitar string stiffness induces a frequency shift towards higher frequency. We also see that this shift is larger for the higher harmonics and increases rapidly. So we have learned that the inharmonicity due to stiffness behaves completely opposite to inharmonicity due to damping. That is, Stiffness increases the frequency of the harmonics and the frequency shift gets more severe for higher harmonics. Damping however, reduces the frequency of the harmonics, but the shift is largest for the lower harmonics and disappears for the higher ones. This spectrum demonstrates the inharmonicity for the damping and the stiffness together. The result is not simply the sum of the two frequency shifts. The shift is the square root of the difference between the squares of the stiffness shift and the reciprocal of the damping time. Please refer to the formula for details. This chart uses the same exaggerated numbers we have used previously in order to make the shift visible. Notice the first three modes have a frequency shift is dominated by the damping and these modes vibrate at a lower frequency than expected. However, after the third mode the shift is dominated by the guitar string's stiffness and all the modes are shifted towards higher frequency. The good news for guitarists is that if we use realistic numbers for the damping time and the inharmonicity constant then the shift is negligible for at least the first 10 harmonics. This chart shows that for an actual guitar E string, the shift is barely visible even at the 10th harmonic. Also we can see that for a real guitar, the inharmonicity is overwhelmingly due to stiffness and not due to damping. Our last simulation uses realistic numbers for the damping and stiffness of an electric guitar high E string. Unlike the previous simulation, the frequency shifts are so small that the overall predicted string shape and motion track well with the ideal case. However, 
it is clear that the inharmonicity does have a measurable effect of the shape of the guitar string. Let's enjoy this simulation a bit before we wrap up this video. I know you humans are all very sad that Eddie Van Halen will not be writing any more music. But you can honor him by writing your own amazing riffs and licks and songs. To make your music extra excellent, you can now deploy the critical secret of guitar string shape calculation by using the Eddie and Riffs equation. This will allow you to understand the shape of your guitar string to a ridiculously precise level and therefore lay down the strongest beats, smoothest grooves, deepest chugs, and if you set the numbers correctly, you can even calculate the exact amount of gent in your composition. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more physics of rock. Rock on brothers and sisters and thank you Eddie Van Halen for the ingenious way you made your guitar strings move.